We'll go ahead and get started. First question, Mark Berman. Hey, Steve, I've got two questions. Uh, one, can you give us the uh, uh, update on uh, John Wall and David Nwaba? Yeah, Dave is good to play, and John is going to be a game time decision. His back is still kind of spasming and whatnot, so uh, we're going to have to wait and see how he responds to treatment and his pregame warm up. Given what the news could have been on Christian, what uh, what are your thoughts that uh, maybe like a, a with, for lack of a better phrase, sigh of relief? Yeah, for sure. It, it's a sigh of relief. I mean, the, the way he went down, the way it started swelling initially, um, it, it looked like it could have been a lot worse. But, uh, you know, we still have quite a bit of time to, to play without him. So um, it's not all great, but it, it's definitely a sigh of relief as far as what it could have been. Zach Allen. Hey, Coach. Uh Will there be more of a small ball rotation tonight? And how confident are you in the small ball? I'm very confident in the small ball. We, we've done a good job with it, uh, whether it's PJ at the five or Jay Sean Tate at the five. And the uh, reality is, based on our roster, that's what we're going to have to do. We'll have Cuz out there. He'll be our primary center. But uh, beyond that, we don't really have a, a, a true center. So uh, we're going to have to play some small ball and get into some switching and uh, speed the game up a little bit, which is good for us. Ali Kambajani. Hey, Steven. Uh, without Christian, what can you do to make up for all that he contributes to, to you on the court, uh, particularly with rim running? And what strengths of DeMarcus will you try to rely upon more uh, during Christian's absence? Yeah, it's going to be hard to replicate all, the, all that Christian does on both ends of the floor. He is become a, a good defender where we can blitz some and, and pick and rolls and we can switch some with a true center on the floor. Um, and, and then his ability to score in many different ways without a play call, that's uh, makes him super valuable. So to, to, to replicate that is going to be very hard. We're going to have to play a little bit faster. Hopefully um, we'll kind of play because in the same way as far as using him to draw his defender away from the hoop and allow us to drive the ball into the paint and take advantage of his shooting ability, his pick and pops, and then his passing ability. You know, he is a very good passer from the high post and, and we're gonna take advantage of that and give him the ball and let him make reads, make, let him make decisions. So it'll be a little bit different, but uh, we're, go we're gonna have to do our best to rally together uh, and, you know, kind of <laughs> make it better <laughs> or make it good without without Christian on the floor. Thank you. Adam Spolin. Steven, um, with Christian on the floor defensively, you guys were able to do a lot of different things and play a lot of different styles. Um, with DeMarcus in his spot, can, are you able to play those same ways or do you have to kind of just uh, strictly stick to drop coverage? Yeah, I mean, we can't really blitz all too much and, and extend him out. Not that he's not able to do it, but then the rotation uh, all the way back to the rim can be far and it can be uh, just spread us out a little bit more than we want to be spread out. So it'll pr probably be more uh, just standard coverages when, when he's on the floor. But when we have our smaller lineup on the floor, we can do a few things. We can switch, we can blitz, we can... Um, junk up, we can actually play some zone. So um, it, it, it'll be more standard when when Cuz is on the floor, but a, a little bit more variation with the small ball lineup. Brian Bearfield. Coach, did you ever imagine that um, less than a month ago that tonight's game will be for first place uh, uh, to tie the Spurs for first place? <laughs> No, nah, I hadn't even thought about it. I, I, I don't look at all at anybody's record besides ours. I don't look at the standings. At some point after All-Star, I'll start paying attention to that. But um, <laughs> to answer your question, based on how we started, no. You know, I didn't expect us to be um, playing as well as we are and, um, you know, in a position to take the lead, I guess. Jonathan Fagan. Uh, with the sort of schedule that you're in, three and four nights, every other day for the for a month to come, 
what's the appropriate kind of minutes for DeMarcus? Uh, what, what's the range that you'd kind of like to aim for with him? Yeah, I don't want him to be um, – I want to be around 30. You know, 26 would be great, uh, 32 if necessary. But, uh, but, yeah, I don't want him to get in the high 30s at all or even mid-30s. Uh, so like you said, our our schedule is a beast. I mean, this is four and five. Then we uh, have tomorrow, and then we have back to back coming up. So that'll be five and seven. And then, as you said, playing every other day till basically All Star break is going to be taxing on everybody. So making sure that not just Cuz, but John, Vic, Eric, Tuck, all those guys are playing appropriate minutes so we can make it make it to the the uh the break Thank Zach, you. Zach Allen hey coach do you think the Marcus Cousins will give us number 28 28 and 17 <laughs> I don't know I hope so <laughs> Mark Berman Mark I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Stephen, uh, have you had a chance? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you've had a chance to talk to, to Christian. What are his spirits? How's he doing right now? He's doing okay. Uh, he's disappointed, but understands that it's part of the part of the game and knows the, the amount of work that it's going to be required for him to get back. And he wants to get back better than he was when he got hurt. And he was still kind of dealing with the ankle and, um, we're trying to be smart as far as getting him back to a place where it won't happen again. So his spirits are just okay. He was a little down uh, last time I contacted him, but um, he's he's raring to get back to his to to get to his uh, treatment. And the thing that I told him is we want him to be around, you know, there's times where if you're going to be out for an extended period of time where you're not around the team and it can really become almost like a lonely spot where you're just doing your treatment and, and, uh, and that's about it. And you're not seeing your teammates, your teammates aren't seeing you. So we really want to make sure that he's a part of everything that we do. And to the extent that it's possible, him being around the team is going to be good for him and good for us. We'll take two more. Brian Beerfield. Coach, given what happened to uh, one of the Nets players on last night, he wasn't able to start the game, then they allowed him to play, and then they took him out. How hard is that to to put uh, implement into your planning when it's time to play a game, knowing that that could happen or could possibly happen to one of your players? Yeah, it's hard. You, you don't really plan for anything like that, like what happened last night. Um, you just kind of have to abide by the rules, uh, whatever the NBA says kind of goes, and adapt accordingly. If there's a guy who um, may or may not play before the game, it's almost like an injury. Like we have John Wall tonight who may or may not play, so there are contingency plans put in place. And with that situation last night, he was in and he was out and he was in again and then played a little bit and then was out. Um, it's really hard to plan for something like that, but you, you kind of treat it in the same way, at least in my mind, as an, as an injury where a guy goes down and now you have to fill that gap in with somebody else. And last question, John Kentucky. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on something you were saying about Christian being away from the team because there are so few people authorized to be around players this season uh, with the protocols. When you go on the road, do you have enough staff to leave an athletic trainer or a therapy guy behind to work with an injured player? Or is that one of the other compromises that's part of the rules this season? Yeah, we have enough staff to, to leave somebody behind and – it's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination, but we do have enough staff, tier one staff that uh, test every day and are following the strictest of protocols. So if he has to stay back, we'll have enough uh, support for him um, for, for that period of time. But like I said, ideally, once it starts to get to where he's able to move around a little bit, then hopefully he'll be traveling with us and we won't have to worry about that. 
Thank you. Thank you, Coach.